Hello and welcome. I'm Jackie Lockie, your financial planning maestro. This series of podcasts is aimed at existing financial planning professionals, as well as those looking to enter the financial planning profession. This particular series of podcasts is focusing on financial planning businesses. We share new ideas and challenge your thought processes to help you improve your service to your clients. We have some amazing guests lined up, helping you look at things very differently. I hope that you enjoy today's podcast episode. Hello and welcome. I'm Jackie Lockie, your financial planning maestro. And in this series, as you all know, we are looking at specific areas of building improvements into your financial planning businesses. And today I'm joined by a very special guest and a very old friend. Well, not so old friend because she's not very old, just me who's very old. And that is Katie Braden, who is the Chief Innovation Officer for Innovating Advice. Welcome, Katie. Jackie, it is so wonderful to be here. And I have to say, Jackie, you are not old. You are in your (laughs) prime and you're fabulous. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. Now, we are here to talk about business improvements for our certified financial planners and those budding certified financial planners out there in the UK, um, looking at many of them who have small and medium-sized financial planning firms, because I have been doing a little bit of research myself lately, and I've seen quite a lot of financial planning firms that have virtually identical or extremely similar websites. Yes. And I think from a client's point of view, I really couldn't choose between different, albeit good, or maybe some of them I don't know, not so good financial planning firms, because they all seem pretty similar. So those are the kinds of topics that I want to get in with you today and how these financial planning firms can actually start to make a real impact and a real difference in attracting the types of clients they want for the future. But before we get into all of that, I want to ask you about how you have become the queen of videoing and marketing. Um, Tell us a little bit about how you got interested in marketing generally and more specifically in videoing, because I know that you've got a photography background, I think, haven't you? Yes. Yes. I actually, while I was born and raised in Seattle, I... I'm not one for dreary rain and dark days. So I actually uh, went to university in Australia, got my degree in photography. And then when the Aussie government kicked me out, I had to go back to the US. And so my mother had a very successful investment advisory firm. And so I joke that I you know, kind of took the natural path into financial planning via a degree in photography. Mm-hmm. But Jackie, the great thing about that is what I'm doing now, I've now been in the financial planning profession for, I think this is my 17th year. And so I am a CFP professional. I started my own business back in 2013. And now I leverage that creative side of my brain and my passion for growing the financial planning profession to help financial advisors leverage video to grow their business. Mm, yeah, and I know that and you've told some great stories about how you originally set up your uh, financial planning business when you when you branched off from from working in your mother's practice and how you set up an online business, didn't you? And how you were targeting millennials. I can remember you target, think, talking about that, how you targeted millennials originally. And then by the end of, I can't remember what it was, five years, you looked at your client bank and it was totally not millennial orientated. Yeah, you are absolutely right. So I spent seven years in my mom's business. And during that time, being the daughter, I got to see every aspect of it from the compliance to I did the billing, the day-to-day operations, investment management, meeting with clients of our uh, employer retirement plans. And it kind of came time to really create that succession plan. And during that time, Jackie, I'd gotten the CFP certification and learned about what true financial planning was. And I tried to introduce it into the firm, but the clients, I'll admit, were just resistant. We only did investment management, just that one single piece. And I was like, no, we need to be doing more and all of the different pieces of financial planning and diving into those conversations about their life goals and dreams. And so I, in early 2013, 
decided to go down an uncharted path and create one of the first completely virtual fee-only financial planning businesses. So I didn't have assets under management. I've never sold a product. I just did monthly retainer, totally virtual financial planning. And it's interesting, you mentioned in the beginning about your website and how your website is different. And because I was doing something so different, and again, leveraging that creative photography background, I started leveraging video on my website back in 2013, which right now feels like it was a century ago in terms of what we've all been through over the last eight years. And that was, that was a huge thing. And it was so interesting because I was explaining how my business and process were different. And I was even speaking out in the industry back then about how your website should not only instantly attract people, but it should absolutely detract people. People yeah. in the first few seconds should look, and and I'm certain people did that. They went to their website and they're like, oh, you know, she's too young. What is she doing? I don't like her. I don't like, you know, her hair or how she smiles, whatever it is, yeah. you know, you're never going to connect with anyone. And that is perfectly okay. Yeah. And the best way to do that is through video. And that leads me really nicely on because you know, you have been one of the pioneers in the financial planning profession, not only in the UK. I know that you have been in the US and in other countries, Australia and South Africa as well. So tell us, why do you think, you know, this? I've, I've read so much lately that people saying, oh, you know, banding around all these statistics that video is the way forward and it's the most popular medium. Why do you think that that is? I mean, I guess part of it is it's been, it's been highlighted even more so because of the pandemic over the last couple of years. But even before before then, video was gaining a you know, significant amount of traction, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It, it has been for a long time, which has been great to see. And I'll say that's because it's always good to look at the silver linings. Probably one of the best silver linings out of the pandemic is, you know, just the technological leap that the financial planning profession has taken. The, I, you know, the more people leveraging video in their business. And the only thing I'll tweak with that statistic, Jackie, is I would say it's authentic video that is really the medium of the future. Because when we think about video, most people tend to think about, okay, I need a script that I'm going to read and perfect lights and the best sound and, you know, to be in a studio and everything has to be perfect. And I have to look quote unquote professional. Yeah. But really those videos aren't what is going to instantly build that no like, and trust. Because yes. anybody can become perfectly polished and learn to read a script. That isn't relatable. So I, when I work with advisors, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say that that's that is key because when you look at so many websites, it's all you know, when I think that probably puts a lot of people off even starting, doesn't it? Thinking I need all this equipment or I need to hire a firm to come in with a big video camera and do lots of editing and all the rest of it. And then I have to sit there and read this script. And then I look quite stilted in front of the camera, you know, a bit like a stuffed shirt. Um, yep. and, and actually we, there is a perception in the profession that, you know, that's what we think clients are looking for, but actually it's not. It's not at all. And the thing is, we sometimes forget that clients are humans too, you know, and when it comes to the idea of telling someone that you need help managing your assets, like that's a really intimidating thing to do. And so often when they go to websites and see these super polished videos, it just adds to the intimidation factor. So I firmly believe we have millions or tens of millions of potential clients out there that want to be working with an advisor, should be working with an advisor, but the perception that they have, it's just too big of a gap. Yeah. Because they're not like me. Exactly. Don't see and yourself. And so that's where, yeah. yeah, this idea of authentic video comes in. And when I say that, I say, use what you've got. You can always upgrade later, but all you honestly need is a smartphone that all of us have in our hand anyway. And daylight, which I hear you guys get in the UK from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yes. I've seen it once or twice when I've been there. <laughs> yes. And that's, you know, that leads me really nicely on because I think certainly for me with starting my own business and 12 months ago now, I can't believe where the 12 months has gone. Wow. Doing your video creation masterclass has been one of the most instrumental things that I've done in helping build, you know, rebuild and build my own reputation. So people have really got to know me as an individual and it's given me the confidence even, you know, to launch this podcast. 
podcast and by doing that. And you know, is that been reflective of the other people that have been on that, um, on, on your masterclass? Yeah, absolutely. But Jackie, I will say, and I didn't even tell you this before, you have been one of our biggest success stories because it's been so fun to see where you started from, where you've come. And you're also the perfect example of getting out of it what you put in, which we know applies to absolutely anything in our life. But you just decided to dive in. You were like, I'm going to do every single weekly challenge. I'm going to keep trying. You attended every live event we did. You reached out for help and you embraced the process, which has been just so, so (laughs) great to see. But what you mentioned has actually been the biggest thing that I never anticipated and my favorite part about it, which is the increase in confidence that people get by going through the masterclass and learning how to leverage this authentic video. And when we think about, you know, younger financial planners or people that are maybe looking to take over a business and, you know, we all get imposter syndrome and maybe it's your first time pitching directly to a prospect and trying to close the sale, or you're going to take over a book of business. You know, all these things can be really terrifying and we get all up in our head, but just by, you know, starting to leverage video and starting from that really nervous place and building that confidence, we see, just like you mentioned, it's giving you the confidence to you know do the podcast and launch into other things. That yeah. confidence permeates so many other areas of your business. Yeah, it does. And it, it, it was so much fun doing it. I had thoroughly, you know, I think you, for most people who know me know that I love, uh, I love an agenda. I want to know what's going on. That's my kind of style. And, uh, you know, if it, if it moves, I need to measure it. And actually none of that <laughs> happened, did it on the video on creation masterclass. And I was like the first few weeks, I was like a gibbering wreck, um, wondering what was going to come my way next. And I think some of the most some of the most useful parts were, you know, actually getting into practice of doing something every week um, and actually just thinking, OK, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be flashy. And I, I think I remember saying to you the first time I tried to edit a video, um, we were doing one or two minute videos, weren't we? And it took me an hour to to it to edit the first one minute video. And I was kind of I had my head on the desk and thinking, how, how on <laughs> earth am I going to get through all of this? But actually, you you know, you were right uh, in setting it up that way because it was it was a process. It was like a transformational process of learning about myself, actually learning about the people around me who were on the course as well, which was you know really valuable because we it was a safe environment to be able to practice those kinds of things. Yeah, exactly. Well, the interesting thing is you know, we talked about the financial planning business I set up in 2013 and how it was different. And one of the other things that I did that was different is modular financial planning. Mm. Because I realized so often, you know, when we think about a financial plan, I've always joked that you're basically giving your client a list of 85 things they're doing wrong. And it's just, you know, completely overwhelming to them. And so how often do we see financial plans not get implemented? And so the Video Creation Masterclass was co-created with Adam Owen, very well known in the UK, just an absolute delight. And he's really the technical wizard behind so much of that stuff. But as we were laying it out, we took that modular approach, right? And we were talking about how most people think, okay, I need lights and camera and action and scripts and all this fancy stuff. (laughs) And I was like, no, you can't overwhelm people. You need to start with the basics and with that foundation. So that's why, you know, that whole first month, it's just about getting comfortable because Mm. even if you have all the fanciest stuff in the world, just like if you're starting a new sport, if you're going to go golfing for the first time, you can have the most expensive clubs. Doesn't mean you're going to hit a hole in one. No. You, know, you need <laughs> to build those foundational skills and just getting comfortable on camera is the most important. Yeah. And then when the course moved on, I think some of my highlights have been doing the outside challenges, talking about hobbies, which again, you know, as a professional, I think we all you know, we're, as you said, we're in our heads. We don't think that clients want to know that side of us, but actually they do, don't they? And actually that showing a bit of personality, showing a bit about, you know, your hobbies and what you love does actually help attract clients. It helps hugely. And it was so fascinating. I did one of my, uh, 
virtual workshops a couple weeks ago and one gentleman joined and this is a workshop for people really starting out. It's basically like a boot camp version of the master class. And he joined, he has all of the lighting and the camera and the audio mixer. And I like, I was a little bit wow. nervous. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, I don't know what he's going to get out of this because he's, he's already got it all. And he does videos, but he joined because he has that mentality of, Hey, I always have more to learn. And the first assignment during this workshop is go outside and just record a 60 second introduction of yourself, you know, ideally kind of sharing a, a hobby or passion. And we came back inside and he was the first one as we were going through and reviewing everybody's videos. He jumped up and he said, oh my gosh, we should all put these authentic videos on our website. Yeah. Because yeah. even though a lot of the people in the group knew each other, they saw a completely different side of each other. Yeah. And, and that's and that's exactly what happened when when I did your video creation masterclass. The, and even now, the you know the speaker influencer program that that I'm doing it also is helps me critique and support other people, which I find really beneficial. It's really rewarding from a personal point of view. Obviously, I'm not the world's expert like you are, Katie, but I can you know I can give positive support and positive feedback to people who are who just starting to embark on, you know, doing public speaking for the first time, which which is so rewarding for me to be able to do. Well, it is. And Jackie, that also brings up another point. You have been on huge stages. You have spoken at big conferences. Mm. You have that experience and expertise. And yet still, once that record button came on for the first time... <laughs> It's a totally different feeling, isn't yeah, it? It was. It was very a very exposing feeling. Um, <laughs> yes, I, it, well, the first video was a nightmare. It never saw the light of day, other than you and Adam watching it. I think, but um, uh, it definitely never went on the website. I'm, uh, listeners will be glad to see because they'll be <laughs> hunting around my website trying to find it now. But but I did. I think I looking back, and that was one of the things that Adam was saying. You know that it is good to look back at some of the older videos to appreciate how far you do go in a course like that um, because you you know as you said I've you know spoke at lots of conferences I've hosted lots of conferences but you're not actually talking to one person when you're talking to 250 300 people it you can't you're not just really talking to one person in the audience where when you've just got the camera in front of you it is yeah. like talking to just one person it's just you and them and so it's much more personal and you, it, you then I think you have to think through carefully where your boundaries are which I think was another thing that I hadn't really appreciated can you know because you can have a little chat to yourself or chat to the camera and you can tell people all sorts of things that you know you can get <laughs> as personal as you choose can't you and so I think yeah. that you know that I think some of the people I've spoken to have kind of been a little bit nervous perhaps starting to do that you know the, like your your video challenge is that you know how much are people really interested to are they really interested to know anything about me um you know are potential clients really interested to know anything about me you know whether I like swimming or running or whatever it might be but actually the reality is that like you say they're human they have hobbies and they they love it I was talking to somebody yesterday actually who plays the piano and as soon as she saw my piano sat behind me, she said to me, yeah. oh, Jackie, I, I play the piano as well. And we spent 10 minutes talking about playing our pianos and how she doesn't play very often anymore. And I, I said how I'm having new lessons and everything now and everything. And she was like, right, you've inspired me. I'm going to go back and play my piano right now. And you just think, you know, that it, it helps with everybody's quality of life doing things like that. It does. And I love stories like that, Jackie. And that just so gets to the heart of, again, the authentic video yeah. and how you can easily leverage video, which I'm sure we'll dive into. But, yeah. you know, it also gets down to what we crave as humans. And, you know, if you think about the entirety of human history, you know, we haven't had videos very long. We haven't even had the written word all that long. Mm. You know, we have spent our entire you know, history, seeing faces and seeing expressions and, you know, hearing tones and voices. And so we're naturally hardwired to want to see those things. Yeah. And when we can't be in person, either because we choose to run a virtual business or it's just a one-on-one -on -one video you send before a prospect meeting, even if you have a brick and mortar shop, it builds that 
relationship and rapport that we all need. And we're definitely you know, starved of it over the last few years in our, in our lack of in-person interactions. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so let's dive into some of the specifics. If people listening now who are thinking, Jackie's gone mad, I'm not going through what she's gone through. (laughs) You know, I like the idea of starting video, but I don't have the budget or the wherewithal to hire a huge camera crew um, or read from a script. You know, where practically, where, give us some tips, where can they start? Yeah, so a couple of little things in terms of you know, just what we should be doing with our body language to start. So again, people get so nervous at the idea of hitting that record button. And we talked about the vulnerability and the imposter syndrome. So, so often we spend our days hunched over our computers and our shoulders are kind of slouched and, you know, our neck is leaned over. So I always encourage people to stand up and stand up and actually, you know, assume the power pose, lift your head up, put your shoulders back. And just doing that, you know, it changes the blood flow and the energy. And then you talked about outdoor videos. Even if it's cold, that's still fresh air. Go outside. Because doing that, you're walking, you're moving your body, you're getting the fresh air. That changes your energy. And then just take your smartphone. You can even just use the video app on your smartphone. And before you hit record, hold a smile just past a count of 1-1,000. Because think about, you know, sales training and, you know, way back when or sales training today, they always say before you pick up the phone, smile because people can hear that smile. So even though you're on video, that alone, and we know the brain chemistry changes when you smile. So even if you're faking it, it will still change your brain chemistry. So all those things will help to kind of get out of your head. And then I always recommend people start with gratitude videos. So this can be a video that you send to your spouse, to your kid, to your parents, to your longest standing client, to a center of influence that has referred a lot of business to you. And think of it just like a voicemail. But the great thing about this is you're just going to just 30 to 60 seconds and just say, you know, hey, I was just thinking about you. I just wanted to, you know, let you know I was thinking about you and say thank you for, you know, ABC, XYZ. And then send it to them. And nobody does this. So they will be totally surprised and delighted. Even if your hair is messed up, even if it's raining, even if you don't have a great background. And they'll write back and they'll go, oh my gosh, that just made my day. You know, you made me cry. That was amazing. And that starts to give you that positive feedback loop. Yeah. Because so often people, I talk to them, they're like, oh, you know, I've been recording these videos or I have, you know, 20 videos recorded that are never going to see the light of day, like you said with your first one, Jackie. <laughs> but this gets it out there. And then you start to realize, oh, I, I don't have to, you know, have perfect hair and makeup and lighting. And that's not what it's about. It's not actually about you. Mm. It's about how you make the other person feel. Yeah. But in our heads, we think it's about us, don't we? Yeah. Yep. Mm, we do. Yeah, that's really interesting. And so, you know, when when you're recording, we're recording in landscape mode, aren't we? Rather than portrait yes. mode. Would you recommend that yes. as well? Yeah. All of those kinds I, of things. You probably remember my videos, Jackie. <laughs> I yeah. do. Adam teased me. He was like, Katie, they get it. Record in landscape mode. And I was like, but we're so used to holding our phone. So you hold your phone in portrait mode, right? And if you're doing FaceTime or whatever, you're in portrait mode. Yeah. But when you're recording... Yes, turn it 90 degrees and record in landscape mode. Because when you watch videos, think about your TV, videos on YouTube, videos on a website, they're going to be in landscape mode. So that just gives more of the environment. It shows more of who you are. And that even helps build trust versus, you know, cutting off and cropping off. Yeah. And that's really interesting. And with one of the, I know one of the outside video challenges you set us during the masterclass was to talk about something interesting that's happening in your locality. And I yeah. went up to um, Cricklade, which is just up the road from me, which is the source of the Thames. Even though I am more than 100 miles away from the Thames, um, I'm at, I'm right next to it's the original source. And 
So I found really interesting things in my local area that I hadn't really appreciated. I actually went to see it, which, you know, it's, it's I guess it's kind of like going on a sightseeing tour in your local town, isn't it? On one of those red buses yeah. that we do in London. And you, you just don't do it if you live there. And it, and some of those things are really rewarding to get out in nature and actually just explore and say, look, hey, this is, this is where I live. And, you know, this is how it links into, you know, one of my hobbies. And I found that you know particularly enjoyable even though I was you know in my running gear and all my hair well like you say was <laughs> windswept shall we say putting it politely and a little red face and all the rest of it um, but just being able to I sat by in Cricklade which is the first town on the Thames and I was recording and there was a family going by and the, there was a little boy on his little push bike and he stopped he was like look mum mum she's recording a video of that river um, <laughs> and it was just so and they stood there and stared at me so I had an audience as well but it was just you know nice to be able to meet the local community they're really supportive of me doing it and after I pressed stop they were clapping away which was great fun <laughs> oh, that's awesome <laughs> And Jackie, that brings up another huge point that I try to make all the time. Again, we spend so much time at our desks. And mm. for a lot of people that had never worked from home before, they find themselves working more and exhausted and not getting exercise. So I love the multitasking element of this that you just mentioned. That's I'm like, go outside. You know, everyone wants their perfect video setup, but I'm like, no, go outside, go explore new places because it's also just so much more interesting. Yeah. You know, and the things that you can learn. And then again, that even gets our creative juices flowing. And rather than thinking about our to-do list, maybe we come up with a, you know, different take on a client's financial plan or think about something that we wouldn't have thought about sitting at our computer. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be just the the kind of boring old technical stuff, does it? It can you can weave in more interesting things or some, you know, financial facts into wherever you are. Yeah. And tell a little bit of your story weaved in through that. You know, there's this fine line and I, I know we talk about, okay, it's not about you, but it's, it is a fine line, right? People want to get to know you and build that relationship with you. So one of the things I recommend doing for people that do blogs, you know, there's a lot of people that have been doing blogs for a long time. They're like, Hey, I send, you know, a weekly or monthly newsletter client to clients with a topic is I encourage you go outside and record just like a 30 to 45 second video on why you wrote that blog. Yeah. I'm, I'm writing that down. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's so easy to do because even if people don't watch the video, the fact that they're seeing your face every month is huge. And again, that has, you know, a historical kind of that imprints in our brain. Yeah. And when you see people or you see them smiling, you know, that, that keeps that relationship going. But saying why, because we get bombarded with so many newsletters and so much stuff. And you're like, okay, sure, I should read this. It's about estate planning and tax law changes. And honestly, most people are like, oh, but if you're like, hey, this is why this is important. Maybe throw in a you know personal story or, hey, this keeps coming up with clients. And I have someone going through the masterclass right now who just started this a couple of weeks ago. And he has seen his click-through rates on his newsletter go from about 10 to 20% to 40%. Wow. As soon as he added these videos. Wow. I'm definitely writing that. I'm going to do that. That's my task for the weekend <laughs> 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 to, uh, to start doing those as well. And I think, you know, as we were saying earlier, it's really easy to get into the habit of doing these short little videos that they don't have to be, you know, massively scripted. You can just jot down a couple of ideas, kind of thread of where you want to go, but you don't have to ramble on with all your ums and ers and oh, I must tell you about this and I must tell you about that. They can be short and succinct and, you know, purposeful and showing a bit of personality um, and they don't need to be boring, but you've got to get into the habit of doing them, haven't you? You do. And that's exactly why the masterclass is designed with every week is just a one to two minute video. Cause then that builds that habit over 12 to 13 weeks of just recording that video. And then that also works perfectly. Cause again, I still recommend people start with these one-to-one -one videos. Cause it also takes away some of the fear of like, oh my gosh, I'm going to put this out into the internet for the whole world to see. But once you do more of these one-to-one -one videos, you know, some other great examples are happy birthday messages. If you have yeah. a client or a center of influence, I love doing these. And I've had people respond, you know, that took the day off work and, and have said, oh my gosh, I've gotten over a hundred messages today. And yours is the only one I responded to because you did something totally different. 
Mm. So think about the little things you can do to stand out in someone's mind. And then guess what? They could, if it's a client, they might be at dinner that night and be like, you wouldn't believe, like I got a video from my financial advisor today. And somebody else is like, I need a new financial advisor. You know, like (laughs) the things that can happen out of that. I have another woman that went through the masterclass that just emailed me last week with a success story that she allowed me to share. And she had a meeting with a prospect and the prospect said, hey, actually my dad needs you know, some help. Would you mind doing an intro call with him as well? And she actually followed up with a video and said, you know, feel free to share this video with your dad. And so basically talked to the dad and introduced herself and everything. And just from that video, they were so impressed. I kid you not, they invited her to join the board that her dad was on. So an advisory board for, you know, a company to manage their assets and everything. Again, it's just, we're in this prime time where it's still so, so rare that anything you can do to stand out and differentiate and how easy it is to do with video with no extra equipment just makes a world of difference. Yeah, yeah. Well, it definitely has a whole made a whole world of difference to little old me over here and my <laughs> business. Definitely, I can't thank you know both you and Adam enough for for everything that you did to support me during those first twelve weeks of that of that course. And I know that we're going to be doing more things together as well. So looking yes. forward to more exciting things coming up too. So tell us if people are interested in doing your video creation masterclass. Can they still can they still do it? Can they still sign up? Are you you're taking yes. regular cohorts of people, aren't you? Absolutely. Yep, taking regular cohorts and I'll list because I know people might listen to this, you know, six months from now or a year from now. So I would say just go to the website and that'll list uh, you know, when the next time you can join is. So the website is innovatingadvice.com. So innovatingadvice.com. And Jackie, I'm going to do this off the top of my head, but how about for anybody that's listening on my webpage, there's a little talk to me button in the bottom right, and that pops up a video. And so I always encourage people, if you have any questions or anything, you can actually send me a video message. Mm -hmm. So anybody that's listening to this, if you're interested in joining the masterclass, send me a video and say, I heard you on Jackie's podcast. I'd love to join the masterclass. And I will send them a code for 20% off the masterclass. Oh, fantastic. That's really kind of you. Thank you very much. I'm sure our listeners will definitely be taking you up on that offer because it was worth every penny as far as I'm concerned. And so thank you for that, Kate. That's very kind. And I will also put the uh, links to your website in the show notes um, for uh, for anybody who wants to double check the spelling or anything like that as well for after the show. So thank you. That's very kind. Um, and so finally, just wrapping up because we are rapidly running out of time. Um, Although I could talk to you all day, Kate, um, about marketing and videos, because I find the whole thing is just so fascinating and so motivating to go through that process of creating and continually, continually improving our videos. Do you have any final tips for our financial planners out there who perhaps maybe they have been stuttering about whether to start or maybe have started, but can't, you know, haven't kept it going? You know, what, what are, what are you, what would be your tips to set some sort of deadlines or whatever it might be? Give us your few top tips. It would be, I would go back to the gratitude thing, because the great thing about that is it all, by By showing gratitude to others, it warms our own heart and it puts goodness out into the world and we need more of that. So just helping to get into that mindset of regularly sending messages. Maybe every Monday you're going to send two gratitude videos just as a great way to set the tone for the week. Again, the, the commentary that you'll get back and the positive response that you'll get back from that, you're like, okay, great. I need to do this more often. You can also do video intros. And again, just Do them when you're not in your perfect look and perfect everything. So another quick example, I went for a run recently. And when I came back, there was an introduction that a colleague had made to somebody else who was kind of influential in the industry. And I was like, oh no, like I wanted to send a video, but I was sweaty and red faced and my hair was going everywhere. And I was like, you know what? I practice what I preach. And I sent a 45 second video and just said, hey, great to meet you. Just went for a run. And, you know, just like the person that saw your piano, we instantly built a rapport. Yeah. And when we hopped on our intro, I was like, oh, where did you go for a run? How often have you been running? Yada, yada. You know, so just 
I encourage people to go for less perfection. Yeah. Because you'll actually get more results with less perfection. And if you ever just want to practice or it's been a while, again, go on my website anytime. Best way to get a hold of me. You can send a video and you can just, you can even say, I'm terrified. I don't know what's going on. Am I even looking in the right place? This is so weird. I feel super awkward. And I will shoot you a video message back. Excellent. Katie, it's been an absolute pleasure as always to talk to you and best of luck with all of your cohort on your masterclasses and all of the community that you are developing. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much, Jackie. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. It's really interesting, isn't it, to listen to other people's points of view about different things, all relating to our wonderful financial planning profession. If you know anyone who might be interested in listening to any of these podcasts, please pass on our details to them. So that's it from me. Join me again next time when we'll be talking all things Certified Financial Planner related and also dropping in on our new entrance to the financial planning profession. Bye for now.